99 pound box is 17 pounds, one seven. And that's a big drop, and I would have been willing to spend 40, maybe 40 to 60 pounds on something cool, um, but I couldn't. So this is money that the artist basically lost. I was willing to pay, they didn't give me the opportunity to spend it. So the risk that you take if you don't have even these sort of staggered price points um, is that your fans who are willing to pay that top price are either going to select downwards and you're losing money, or they're just going to abandon altogether. Alright, so we've looked now at what does a pre-sale look like. Uh, and to answer that question, we have a range of compelling offers uh, at different price points. Uh, we have a data capture included, and we have some options to share the page. Does anyone want to ask any questions about the pre-sale before we get into the last section? Okay. Alright, so all the building blocks are in place. We've got our mailing list is accumulating all the while. Um, we've carefully planned the pre-sale, we've built it and it's ready to go. It's live, it's launched. Uh, how do we go about now keeping the fans engaged? Is it going to be a case of if you build it, they will come? I think we all know that's probably not going to be the case if we've learned anything from Wayne's World. Um, have you guys got any ideas about how you might go about keeping your fans engaged? I want to turn this over to the room to start with. So are you ready? Anyone got an idea for me? Oh, me. This is great. Keep asking questions on other sides.
he's just creating a relationship with him. It's making, not letting him just go off home and just really talking to him and saying, look, did you like the music? And, and exchanging yeah. you know, information. And another thing as well is getting other people to do a remix of your song. Very that's cool. A, that's a good way. Definitely. Getting other producers to do. And another thing as well, always reinventing your music. So just trying something different. Because you might have something, you might have an album, um, but it's good to have remixes or trying something new. But always gigging and just getting out there and, and, and not letting the fans, you know, go around just building a relationship is the best way. Because once you've got one person, if they speak, the best way of marketing is that person speaking to other people. That's Absolutely. Yeah, it's I like, yeah, it's, that's, it's this networking. Well, actually, I have something to say about this. It's, it's, it's a rule for me. If you're not interesting enough for people to talk about you, then you shouldn't even be marketing. You should be doing this. Imagine, can a person talk about what you've done? What are they going to say? Oh, it's an indie musician releasing an indie album. If that's what they're going to get, then you're not, you're not interesting enough. Be interesting. That, that's my advice. This is what I'm trying to do. And if you do something that is valuable or interesting, people will talk about it. This is the fourth event and see how many people are here through word of mouth. It's something interesting, it's something they're looking for. People talk about it in the group, they're friends. So, yeah. Hey there. Uh, what was the question again? How to keep kind of fans okay. But to be honest, I have my doubts that the album is even a valid thing even more uh, in music. But, um, you know, uh, going back to the question you asked and how to keep them engaged, you know, I don't have, I don't have an album yet or anything, but um, in uh, how I imagine that I will, what I am starting to do is, is continuous content. I don't, See, I don't believe in building up to a big album launch anymore. I don't know, I shouldn't be so blank about it. I'm sure there's, you know, there's artists that it will work for, but the way I see things going for myself is um, that the music, the art of the music is going to be a continuous living, evolving thing. And through my website, through social media, I will be constantly creating music, Maybe through art. Email too. Sorry? Maybe through email too. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, you know, the things that I've been doing, for example, is, um, um, you know, my blog is really in its early days, but I have this thing called Words and Pictures, where I take some lyrics from one of my songs, just three, four lines, find a photo online that, that kind of connects with that, and I just post that up. And then, you know, the next day, I'll uh, you know, post a song, and the day after that, I might um, you know, so, uh, take a, a photo of some hand scribbled lyrics that I, you know, when I was writing the song. So that's the way I'm thinking about approaching things. No, that's cool. It's, that's great. Yeah. Some more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi. I think it's really important if you also want to have fans is to expose them in aspects of your personality that don't necessarily relate it to their artistic form or music, but it's like, for example, I love fishing or I love cooking, I make that pretty apparent on my website, it's even pictures of the fish and stuff, but like, it's like almost a thing where people go like, oh, you know, that's quite cool, I like that, I like cooking, oh, you know, so it's, then the person gets a different level of kind of intimacy with you. Uh, without being all that, you know, like Instagram pictures every 10 seconds, but you know, you kind of get information out that are not related to the artistic side per se, but it's things that are amalgamated into who you are, kind of as a person, which then kind of affects your art. Can I ask a question? Is that right? Yes, please. Ask well, basically, that bugs me, you know, because like I have music on my mind all the time, and it's uh, and I write is one of is one of my functions. I can't do without writing, but what I find is. Or, 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 you know, we've got so many means nowadays to market it ourselves, but a lot of the times it's like you have to divide your brain in so many things, like you have to divide it into the part where you give yourself into the moment and you write a song, and then you have to divide it and get away from it and be like an individual that has to think about figures and other stuff. Like, do you think that this is gonna, in the 
because it's a fairly, let's say, new thing, like 10, 15 years, would you say that kind of approach maybe? Listen up. Listen up, listen up. Yeah, so do you think in the grand scheme of things it's going to change the way artists create music? Because now they have to think mm. all that stuff as well. Yeah, no, this is something that the Jim Corner maybe kind of touched on as well. I think it's a, it's a good issue to raise because I guess it's particularly relevant for us who are starting out and we don't need to have a support team around them. Um, and as I said to this, to this gentleman over here, I think it's just a matter of figuring out what's important um, to start with. It's maybe not important to start with to have your hand in every single thing, but I think it's, it's definitely important to make your music available, like on SoundCloud, for example, to have an, a mailing list widget. Hopefully people will, will want to sign up. It's, it's not that easy to get people to sign up, I know that. Um, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed, like there's so many things I need to figure out before I can get anywhere. I think that the really, the, 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 uh, the advice that a few people have had today it is brilliant, and that is really just focus on the music, do some touring, make sure you've got a few of those building blocks in place so you have a Facebook page, and you have some way for people to find you, and, and that's going to be enough to start with. Once you start needing those extra things, there's going to be new people who materialize that will help you, I'm sure. Hi, um, I want to ask, I know the key for the fans engaged, um, I noticed when I'm performing at venues and gigs uh, that, and also from other artists' point of view, that they, you know, they've got a CD, they give the CD to somebody free of charge, or, um, you know, they just interact with them, but I know with the, with the websites as well, is it, is it a good idea to kind of entice people to go on the website by saying you can win the CD, or... Do you think that's a good yeah, way to Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, anyway, if you've go. got someone visiting your website, that's half the battle done, you know? Like, so there's any way that you can get them there, then, then do it. <laughs> and then once they're there, you can, you know, offer them some free music for an email address, brilliant. Invite them to look at you on other social platforms, but, I mean, by all means. Um, sorry, also, I just wanted to ask another question. It has, it has more to do with uh, what you were discussing a bit earlier, but um, in terms of the pre-sales, what, what, in your opinion, what is best? Because I know I've got friends that are musicians as well, and they do single launches, EP launches, album launches. What is really the best thing to do if you've got, you know? <laughs> I think it. I mean, this, the the gentleman over here was, was talking about the, yeah. the drip feeding kind of constant. Maybe this, maybe the album isn't always relevant for for you as a musician. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Some people like what, Radiohead or, or December sort of, they put out albums as like concepts, so it's, it's a whole package. But other people, like I think especially in the dance sector, we call it the sector genre, uh, they're releasing tracks kind of all the time, and then there'll be a remix and there'll be some kind of crazy measure. So it really just depends on, on you, but I guess that doesn't really help, does it? I know that it can be really hard trying to figure out how to package I, the music. I, just because I've been told, uh, just because I've, I'm looking to the EV launch, but I've also been told to do single launch as well by okay. another label. So I just, mm -hmm. I just want you to know what, you know, what is the best way, really, what, in your opinion, because I've got friends that have done EP launches, I've got friends that have done single launches, and they've both been very good. So I'm looking at what, yeah. what you know, what is. What the maybe, I mean, maybe look at the music that you, the kind of, you, you've obviously got some music that you're ready to release, and sort of figure out what makes the best package. But I mean. At the moment, I'm going to, you know, towards the EP launch, but I just wanted to know what it is. Just so you've got a 